Hey guys, welcome to Freedom in a Budget. It is Dumping Debt Friday, my favorite video of the week. I do Dumping Debt Friday every Friday, but this week it's actually Thursday because I have a really, really fun collab coming out tomorrow with Budget Girl, so stay tuned for that. But today is a Thanksgiving Dumb and Get Friday, Dumb and Get Thursday. So happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're having an amazing time with your friends and family. If you are in the US and having lots of turkey and pumpkin pie and apple pie and all the good stuff. And I hope that maybe you're watching this after you're stuffed and or while you're cooking and you're just having a great time. So we have some really great questions. And if you have a question for an upcoming Dumb and Get Friday, please leave it down below in the comments or a money win. And I would be so happy to share that with you. And Piper is currently climbing up on the table. So we're gonna take care of this real quick. Say bye, Piper. Bye. Okay, Kat is currently locked in the office. So let's get into the questions. The first one is Chris and he says, hi, I'm a new subscriber and discovered your channel from the collab video with Baby Steps Brad. Aw, Baby Steps Brad is awesome. I have a question a little bit off topic of, from this pantry video. How do you shop for a sweet tooth on a budget? I'm assuming things like box brownie mix is cheaper than buying baked items from the store, but any suggestions would be appreciated. So yeah, so we have a sweet tooth. We definitely have a sweet tooth. And I used to be a really, really big baker. I always loved baking goods and I just have just, I don't know, I enjoy baking more than cooking. And I love it, but now that I'm on Weight Watchers, I do not do that as much, just because it's not the most points friendly and the most Weight Watchers friendly. Now you can adapt recipes, but I just try and stay clear of them. So, but like boxed brownie goods are so much cheaper than buying the like ones from the bakery or different things like that. Or you can even go even cheaper by making them from scratch with the flour, butter, sugar, all of that. That's gonna be even cheaper than buying the box mixes. So definitely doing those versus the ones from the bakery or the like the aisle with it. I know at Aldi they have um, like all the crescent rolls and all the cookies and all of that. But those are, they're expensive. It adds up so quickly and you can make it from scratch so much, so much cheaper and it tastes better, it's fresher and just more delicious. So that is a huge tip. Next question is from Bonnie. And she says, while saving for baby step one, again, I'm conflicted between health and beauty products. For instance, I like using lotion, $10 for Amazon, 32 ounces, or deodorant from Piper Way for $16 because it doesn't contain aluminum. I change face wash stuff, which is more expensive. I buy these products because your skin is your biggest organ. I want to use products that are good for me. Absolutely. But I'm starting to wonder if I shouldn't do this anymore. What do you think? Do you give up certain splurges while on the baby steps? This is a really good question. This is something that I struggled with as well as, you know, taking care of your body and even eating healthier foods while, you know, when I was paying off my debt and you guys saw my grocery budget it was $100 a month. And so with that, you know, sometimes you have to eat a little bit more processed foods and not as many fruits and vegetables. But just having that balance of, you know, yeah, you can have really great foods that are cheaper. And sometimes you have to shop around. Sometimes you have to go to places like Aldi versus places like Publix. Publix is really expensive and Aldi is so much cheaper and you can still get really great food. So going to places like that, going to a farmer's market, you know, sometimes you have to drive a little bit farther, but you can get really, really great deals. So that is, a, that's a huge tip. So for splurges like that. Maybe asking for them for Christmas. Christmas is coming up um, or when you have a birthday and saying, hey guys, these are some products that I really would love and I don't you know, wanna buy them. I do that. I have so many stuff like dry shampoo. Last year I had that in my stocking. Um, I have an Amazon wish list of what I want for Christmas and so I put stuff like that. I put the highlighter that I use for my makeup. I put, um, what else did I put on there? The primer for my eyeshadow, dry shampoo, all of that I put in there for stocking stuffers for my family because they're like, I don't know what to buy. And so otherwise it ends up being like candy and different things like that that you just don't really want or you shouldn't be having anyways. So Christmas, which is right around the corner, is a really, really great way to ask for those items that are splurges for you and that you don't want to really spend the money on, but they're things that you really want and are things that are good for your body and different things like Timmy. Um, you know, Timmy has this awesome skincare line and it is, it is a little pricey, you know, but there are coupon cones and stuff, but you know, sometimes it's, it's a great gift. Great question, Bonnie. 
Next one is from Katie Staples, and she said, how do you get, deal with very real income? My husband works a ton of overtime. I don't even remember what non-overtime check is. I'm commission only employee. That's a great question. So what I do for that is when, Jamie is the same way, when Jamie goes out on a gig, his paycheck can be almost double what it is when he's in the warehouse and when he's not on a gig, which is just crazy. And so it's really bittersweet when he goes away on gigs because it's, you know, I miss him and he's not here and stuff, but <laughs> his paychecks are quite a bit more. And he, he likes going out on the road too. He enjoys it, but they're long days. They're like 16 hour days. So what I do is I, when I make my budget, I do base pay. So the absolute lowest that it could be is what I budget off of. Because what happens if a gig gets canceled? Jamie's gigs get canceled all the time. And then it's like, oh crap, I budgeted for this month and now it's gonna be $1,000 less. What are we gonna do? So I just do base pay and then anything that comes in above and beyond, that is just a bigger blessing. And then you can put that towards your debt snowball or whatever baby step you're on and just use that extra cash that way. But you don't want to budget with the thought of we're expecting this overtime, we're expecting this bonus, we're expecting this commission, the sale to come through. Just do the base, base lowest that it could be. Next is from a loving housewife. I love that name. So it says, love your budget reports. And also, do you have any advice for a couple um, couple money management? My husband and I make about 90,000, but we also have 75,000 in debt. Huge, mon huge money payments and irregular income. I've been budgeting since we met for about two years, usually not using you need a budget. I feel like we've gotten nowhere. Still late on payments, no money saved, and I'm occasionally scared of bouncing checks. We live paycheck to paycheck, and even when we often run out of the next. My husband wants nothing to do with the budget. He can't keep his cool when talking about money. We have three kids together and a great couple. The only thing that stirs up problem between us is a huge pressure on me, but I also feel like powerless. I can't control everything, even though I feel the responsibility is mine. I know you are the nerd and Jamie is somewhat a spender in the relationship too. How do you manage this? Please help. I envy the position you and Jamie are in. I would love for uh, us to also have money ahead of us. We have dreams of buying a house and a camper one day. I'm seriously doubting it will ever happen the way things are going now. P.S. I followed you for years, even before you were ma married and you're paying off your debt. Aw, thank you. So this this is a huge struggle for so many couples. And Jamie and I actually struggled this in the beginning of our marriage of just being on the same page. And I've talked about this a lot of when we were in premarital counseling, the topic of money came up. And I was like, oh, you know, we don't have to spend too much time in this. You know, we're debt free. We are cash flowing our wedding. We're going to have no debt in our marriage. And it's going to be awesome and stuff. And the guy was like, okay, that's great. And, you know, who's going to handle the money? We talked about it for like a half hour and that was it. And then we went on to another topic where usually couples spend a couple weeks there. Well, when we got married, it was just a huge communication issue of, you know, how we spend money, what, you know, different things of, you know, how he's spending money, how I'm spending money and our thought process on money. And, you know, he was more of the, if we have it, let's spend it. You know, what's the need to save? But at the same time, he had really big goals that he wanted to hit down the road in the future. So just kind of like bring back into reality, reality of like, okay, we can enjoy our life now, but we also have these big goals that we want to save for in the future. And we can't hit those unless we're kind of cutting back now. We can't have both worlds and, you know, hit our goals, at least in the time frame that we want. And so, you know, just being persistent and doing everything that I could on my end. And then he was kind of seeing like, oh, okay, she's sacrificing. And, you know, there were so many days where I would come home from work and be exhausted, just mentally exhausted. He has more of a physical job and I have more of a, you know, I have a desk job, but it's very mentally draining and exhausting and, you know, a lot of thinking and, and stuff. And so there were times I didn't want to cook dinner. I didn't want to, you know, have to go and, you know, make this big meal and be in the kitchen for an hour and this and that. And, you know, but I did because it's, I wanted to sacrifice versus just ordering pizza or going out or, you know, doing something like that. And he saw those sacrifices. He saw when I was exhausted and, you know, I still made dinner for us or when I was up late cooking lunches for us or, you know, all day Sunday after church meal prepping so that we could have food. And we also, um, for his lunches, cause he used to eat out three meals a day, three meals a day before we got married, he ate out. And so it was a really big change for him of, 
cooking lunches and bringing lunches where I had already been doing this for years. So what we did is we had him bring lunches twice a week. So I told him, I was like, I will make you anything you want. You want filet mignon, you want this, you want that, you want anything you want, except seafood. I don't, he loves seafood, but I'm like, I hate seafood and the smell and everything. So I was like, if you really want seafood, I'll make you seafood, but please don't. So, but I was like, anything that you want and I'll cook you will be cheaper than you buying it out. Even if it's, you know, an expensive steak or something like that, it's still gonna be cheaper buying it at the grocery store and making it than going out to eat. So we got in the habit of that. And so we did two days a week. And then after a couple months, he was like, okay, you know, like we upped it to three days a week. So we upped it to three days a week. And then a couple months later, now he's doing a four to five days a week. So it's really been a huge change and he's really seen how it saved us a lot of money. And then when we do our budget meetings at the end of the month and he can see how much we were able to put towards saving, you know, how we're saving for this car. We're actually buying a car tomorrow on Black Friday and you know we're gonna be able to pay cash for that like he's like holy cow that's crazy and we were just talking yesterday um you know i was like babe isn't it crazy that we're buying the car now like we've been saving for so long it like it's crazy that it's finally here and he's like yeah that means then after we do that then we can start saving for my new car right and i was like yeah like he was joking and i was like yeah like that was already in the plan for us to start saving for your new car we're not gonna be saving as much you know maybe like three to five hundred dollars a month towards it and then buy it in a couple of years but yeah like that was the plan he was like oh okay like he was totally joking but he was so excited that then it would go on to him and a new car for him so have goals for him too you know goals that like you may be excited, but it's he's really excited about. He's really pumped about. And so that it's like his his dream, his goal. And you can really get him to, to go after it. Sorry, Skylar's playing right now. Um, yeah, so I really hope that helps. And just, you know, having him see the sacrifice that you're making and not rubbing in his face, not being like a Debbie Downer about it, but just seeing like, so he's like, oh, wow, babe, she's she's really working hard. Or, yeah, like, okay, I see this. And everything that you're doing in the kitchen and different things like that, like cooking from scratch that saves so much money, making those home-cooked meals, you know, when you're doing your part on your end, he's going to see that. And he's going to be like, oh, okay, like I can sacrifice a little bit. We can do this. And, you know, just, just doing what you can on your end and not just, you have to be careful about your heart and not getting bitter. That's huge because you can get bitter very, very easily. All right. We've got a money win guys. Are you ready for this? Are you ready? Baby step into freedom is dead free guys. I am so, so, so proud of her and her husband. That is absolutely incredible. Debt free. Welcome to the debt free club. And actually speaking of debt free, Amanda from debt free and sending CA did her debt free scream yesterday. So go check that out. That was incredible. So guys, debt free, congratulations, internet high fives. I am so excited for you. And I just am so excited. So check out baby step into freedom on Instagram and YouTube. She's incredible. Her and her husband, Aaron, incredible couple. So that is all I have today. Please leave your comments down below for upcoming Dummy Debt Friday videos. I hope you have an incredible Thanksgiving and enjoy your time with your friends and family. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Bye.